Well, good morning. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Well, the winter chills in the air and it's getting cold outside, so it's time we're going to harvest the uh, butternut squash and the acorn squash. We're going to talk about how to store your winter squash, and so we'll see you down there at the pumpkin patch. So we're down here at the Forgotten Pumpkin Patch below the pond here. It is a beautiful day with the cool air out here. And uh, we're down here picking the, the butternut squash and the acorn squash. And so we've had a good harvest of them this year. We have given, we have given quite a few away to friends and family. My sister-in-law I think of who likes her butternut squash so she can make soup. And my, my daughter Julie, she loves to make soup. And my wife uh, likes to make uh, different things from her butternut squash but anyhow before we talk about storing the squash for the winter time let's just talk about the squash plants themselves and so you have here some uh, Waltham butternut squash you know this particular pack was a dollar nineteen and here's one little seed and so one little seed will produce anywhere from four to six butternut squash or even the same with the uh, per plant and so even the same with the, the uh, mammoth table queen squash they'll also produce four to six maybe even a little bit more depending on your soil conditions and uh, these take about a hundred days to mature for the for the uh, butternut squash and also uh, about 85 days for maturity for the table queen acorn squash and so my favorite of all of them is really the, the butternut squash. It seems like you get a bang for your buck with these. It's a nice sized squash. They're easy to grow. And uh, and so they just like a lot of good fertile soil, good compost we grow them in. Uh, we also have like a three by six foot raised planter bed that I used here. I have three of these that I grow them in. They seem to like to be either planted in a, like a berm or in a raised bed area. And so I had actually salvaged these boards from some old table, uh, picnic tables we had. I like to repurpose everything. And so uh, these seeds take about three weeks if you were to start them in your basement to come to, to be able to, before they develop their true leaves. And so you're talking about two, three weeks. Uh, I planted these in, in late May. They like the soil temperatures nice and warm. So you want to make sure all the, there's no frost around any longer. And so, uh, and it takes about 100 days for maturity and so uh, I did a video earlier on on how can you know when you're squash or ripe and ready to pick and so I would encourage you to maybe watch that video and so the squash here uh, let's take a look at them a closer look for instance we have this one here on the ground this one here has some few surface defects on them and so these you may want to use earlier because they may not store as longer. And so you want you want to make sure you cure your these squash for about 10 days out in the warm sun so it helps remove some of the excess moisture and also hardens the skin on them for, for winter storage. And just keep an eye on any the squash you may have a cut in cut in them or they may not store as long and so you would want to use those up. The, and the storage for these acorn squash are only about five weeks. But I've also grown um, the Blue Hubbard squash. They have a good store storage on them. Uh, they're about up to six weeks, just like your your butternut squash. But the the, the um, Blue Hubbard squash are nice big ones. I'm hoping to do them for next year. But one of my favorite ways of, of cook, cooking the butternut squash is... Uh, you know these are kind of hard to peel and cut sometimes and so my favorite way of doing them is, is put them in the, putting them in the oven for about for 350 temperature for about 45 minutes to an hour whenever you feel like you can pierce a fork through them then you can cut them up and take the seeds out of them and so that's what I would encourage you to do that my 
my daughter likes to make the, again the butternut squash soup out of them that's one of our favorites but the nice thing about these winter squash is that you know civilizations have lived off of these for centuries because they'll store in your basement or in your garage I keep mine in my garage because it's insulated and uh, it's just an easy place to get to my squash from my kitchen to my garage but your uh, basement's also good because it likes around 50 to 50 degrees to 55 degree temperature for storing these and so but my favorite of them all is the butternut squash the acorn squash are a little bit harder to well you can make a, a stuffed acorn squash which is nice with rice and beans and tomato sauce and your garlic your your favorite flavorings even your little acorn squash if you got the little ones here you could cut them up and make them into a soup of some kind or a puree and use them to even make like uh, like muffins because your butternut squash is similar to tastes similar to a pumpkin and so uh, and even these vines here you can see like over here these were the acorn squash vines you can see them coming here and this vine over here they start I had two in this particular area here that started and they just branch out all over the ground and uh, we still have a couple more here to cut down on the ground here a couple more of the acorn squash let's just cut these up and we'll put these in the wagon here you do want to keep about two to three inches of stem on your squash when you go to cut them too now you can see this one see this one's been laying on the ground for too long so you're just going to, have to throw this one away also if they're heirloom varieties you can just save the seed for next year and so let's just cut this one other one here on the ground this one seems to be good, but you do want to take them and wash them off. Make sure they're good and clean before you store them. I'm going to be hosing these off and uh, and then curing them for about 10 days. And over there also too, we have the uh, bottleneck gourds that we I can show you. We grew these over here, particularly just to use for uh, birdhouses. And so these are ready to to. Uh, Put in our, I store these inside my shed and so they will be dry by springtime and uh, you can drill a hole in these and make these for a birdhouse. We also have a video on how to how to build a, a birdhouse uh, out of out of gourds and so uh, these were also fun to do. You can just grow them from a pack of seeds uh, and there's just so much money that you can save by growing your own gourds your own uh, vegetable plants your your peppers and i would encourage people to even think about uh, growing things in container garden gardening if they don't have the room for a garden outside your house and so uh, you can just save a lot of money just by doing it this way so i would encourage you to think about that so i just want to thank you for joining me today this is plant smart living with farmer fred